If you think AI is unstoppable, think again. Gatekeepers of content are choking off the very fuel that powers every language model on Earth. Let's talk about it. So welcome to Dave is Not AI, the channel where we take a critical, no-nonsense look at artificial intelligence. I'm Dave Linthicum, an AI expert with over 30 years of experience in the enterprise AI field, and I'm a top AI influencer and thought leader. Here we examine what works and what doesn't, providing honest and objective analysis. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. Let's get started. So this is something that I popped up uh, in uh, my AI architecture class last week because I thought it was interesting. I, I don't think it got on everybody's radar screen, um, but we see a movement afoot to start limiting the data that can be uh, scraped uh, from the internet, which is obviously the fuel that powers most of the LLMs out there. So if you look at all the LLMs, such as ChatGPT and Llama, and you know, just there's hundreds of them out there now, uh, probably too many, and they take they're very expensive to train. Um, they're very valuable to us as tools because they were trained on the holistic information of the, on the internet. In other words, every book, every article, you know, every news story, you know, everything that's out there, they used as training data. And in doing so, they came up with a pretty advanced uh, large language model that we can use to answer questions and write, you know, write reports and write articles, things like that. You know, tell us about ourselves, write our bios, all that kind of stuff. Well, they assumed that I think they're always going to have access to the whole of the, inter the internet information source. And I don't think that's going to be occurring longer term. There seems to be technology that's taking steps to start to cut them off. And let's talk about what that means to the LLM world. Well, Cloudflare, and you guys may know that from the CAPTCHA stuff that you see on lots of websites, a major content delivery network handling 16% of global internet traffic will block AI crawlers from scraping website data by default unless site owners permit access uh, to, or compensation. This move is aimed at empowering creators and protecting internet content, but it could hinder AI model development by restricting data scraping for training. So publishers can now opt for a pay per crawl model, reshaping the AI data collection landscape and promoting their you know, fair, fair practices. Now, as someone who creates content, I can kind of see where the content content creators are coming from. And I know that when I use LLMs and I'm analyzing something like researching a book or researching an article, when I ask some of the questions, I see my <laughs> my IP coming back at me as an answer to the question. Of course, there's no attribution to it. And what happened was the LLMs, you know, crawled through my book as well as everybody else's books out there and, and assumed and really kind of accumulated the pattern of an answer based on the question I was asking. And obviously asking, you know, very particular questions around, uh, you know, AI in the field, things like that. I'm going to see my content and my ideas and my IP come back at me. So that's a little disconcerting. I'm not going to sue anybody over it, but it is the fact that this company is making money by producing my content. Now, I don't think there's a lot that can be done about it. I think there's lawsuits underway. I'm not even going to get into those. those. Those almost never go in a good direction. But people who are sensitive to that have the ability now to stop these crawlers from looking through their content and learning from their content. So if you're writing a new book, you're writing a new article, those sorts of things, you can um, either stop the AI bots from going through it and gathering the information or you can put forth uh, the ability to charge them for it. So in other words, if you want to use my information, you want to crawl and train your LLM on my books, my articles, you know, my videos, uh, things like that. That's perfectly fine, but you got to pay me. And I, I think that's interesting because I think that's going to stifle a lot of the growth of the LLMs over the next few years. And in essence, they're going to be running out of uh, data that's going to be meaningful information that they're going to need to train their knowledge models. And if that data is not going to be there, or their data is not accessible, then they're going to cease to do it. And I think the value of LLMs as we're moving forward is going to be diminished over time. So depleting high quality public data is kind of what we're getting on here. So much of the high quality, diverse and easily accessible public data out on the web has already been scraped and used for existing LLM. So the new models will have a little fresh data to learn from uh, if we're going to restrict access to the information. And it's funny, the, the people who 
create LLMs have always been open and honest about this. In other words, they know that the first generation of the LLMs that were based on information, you know, for the last 150 years or as long as we're gathering information and digitally enabling it, um, books, articles, things like that, that the best bang for the buck was going to be the first instances of those LLMs because they're in essence taking the training of all the information that was created from the beginning of time and is available on the open internet. And it knows that we're not generating data, you know, at the same rate that we did over the last 150 years. And so, you know, therefore the new versions of the LLMs that are trained with the information that's out there, there's not a lot of net new information relative to what they saw, you know, three or four years ago when they first started training these LLMs. So they realize that there's going to be a diminished benefit coming back from these things. Now, what's going on now is not only are we going to see a diminished benefit from creating net new data, but much of the data that we would normally target to scrape in order to train these bots, in order to train these LLMs, is going to be disallowed. And if that's the case, you're going to pay for it. And if that's the case, then we got a problem because if there's not a lot of new information that they're allowed to scrape, then the LLMs are going to have a diminishing return over time. So widespread web data blocking is really what I think is going to be the trend moving forward. An increasing number of websites are implementing measures such as robot.txt, files, captchas, paywalls, and anti-scraping technologies like we just read with Cloudflare, preventing automated data collection by LLM developers. And again, this is something we could do for a long period of time. We could actually, in you know, search engines that were cataloging the entire internet, they would have bots that would run off and basically collect information. So when you type something in to a search engine, you're actually going into a database and you're looking at indexes that were created by bots that are going out and scraping the internet. The LLMs go a step further. So not only do they scrape the location of the data and the subject matters and indexing what's, what information is there, but they learn from the information and create a knowledge model based on the information. That's a bit of a different trick. Now it's gonna have more value to it, but if we disallow access to the information, they're gonna cease to have that capability. So this comes down to content licensing restrictions and, you know, content platforms and publishers are actively enforcing stricter licensing, making it legally and technically difficult for model creators to use their material for training without explicit permission or for paying the bill. And we know the authors, people who make a living on writing stories and have content out there that, that's, that's owned, it's their IP, uh, and it's their proprietary content, they're taking steps to disallow access to their net new content. So they know they can't go back in time and just allow access to content and books they wrote, you know, 10, 20 years ago, things like that. I can't do either with my 17 books. They're already out there. But they know that they can put technical, technical mechanisms in place to uh, disallow access and then also perhaps gate the access with some sort of a pay uh, fee that's going to be charged. I'm not sure the LLM folks are going to participate in that. It's just too complex. If you think about it, it's going to be billions of pieces of information that they would normally have access to. And if some of them are charging for that information, um, they're not going to be able to afford it. Also, we're going to have a misbalance of information. So in other words, if the only information out there is the information that they're allowed to scrape, um, then we're going to see biases uh, in these uh, in these models because and sometimes the opinions that we want out there we're going to allow people to read and the opinions that we don't want out there we're not going to allow them to read so we may have some marketing biases that pop up in these llms that are basically the result of the fact they can only get access to half the data that they could in the past and that's going to cause these models to behave differently so and right, right now there's a rise in opt-out initiatives and movements encouraging artists, writers, other people who are creating IP, website owners to opt out of sharing data. And these are growing. Open letters to technology tools like data poisoning specifically target LLM training, further limiting accessible training data. So in other words, they're putting their foot down. Uh, they believe they're getting ripped off and maybe they are. Uh, and they're saying, if you want access to the information, uh, we're going to disallow it or we're going to screw you up in some way, shape or form, you know, based on the poisoning, uh, poisoning activities. And by doing so, they're going to end up making more rules than they're able to do now. Right now, uh, they're scraped without the permission. And I think those days may be coming to an end.
And so we're shifting toward more walled gardens. So more content is moving behind logins, paywalls, or restricted app-based ecosystems, making it inaccessible for crawlers and LLMs, which reduce the breadth and variety of data available for training. Again, if they're only able to get at the data that they're shown or they're allowed to see, then these content producers can introduce biases because they know that the data that they're allowed to see um, is going to lean a certain direction or push for certain ideas. And the one that they consider is something they don't want them to understand or want them to know, then they're going to put protections on them, put paywalls around them, things like that. So they'll be able to control uh, if everything kind of goes the way it is now, they're able to control the ability for certain behaviors to be built into these LLMs based on the fact they're only exposing certain types of data. And I think that's going to that's going to be a concern if people are using these LLMs, you know, for core business operations. You know, we talk about hiring and firing a few, uh, you know, a few shows ago. If that's going to be the case, then this is going to be a bit of a problem. So as a technical arms race in data protection, LLM developers find new ways to collect data. Website owners respond with more advanced scraping detection and prevention techniques. This will result in a constant battle that ultimately reduces the overall amount of usable training data that's out there. So there's no endpoint where we're not going to have a diminished quality from these LLMs because people are getting wise around the data that they're able to consume. Now, I know, you know, people who use um, LLMs, and I'm a user of LLMs, and I think most of you are probably users of LLMs, and it's certainly built into everything we're, you know, touching these days, word processors, uh, you know, uh, human resource applications, web browsers, you know, everything is AI connected, and typically is communicating with LLMs at the back end there may be a time when we can't trust it as much, or we're gonna to have to put very detailed technological governance around the utilization of these LLMs to make sure we don't deal with biases, or we don't we deal with meta hallucinations, or we don't come up with the wrong information that's being called from the use of these LLMs because of the selective data that they're trained upon. And I think that's just the reality we're gonna be heading to. So you might as well get used to it. Well, anyway, that's going to be interesting to see with the way this whole market moves uh, now that we have the ability to uh, disallow these LLM scrapings to occur. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also, check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, stay very, very safe. Later.